my name is Stuart Hamlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's Feldenkrais lesson, we'll be exploring some very interesting twists and movements in the spine. It's a great lesson to do if you are somebody who plays golf, if you're a tennis player or a squash player or any kind of racket sports. And it's a great lesson too if you just want to work on things like your walking and standing balance. Please begin by lying down on your mat. And if you need to take a little bit of support underneath the head to ensure that you've got a long neck as opposed to a shortened neck with that head tilted back, then please take a pillow or a blanket just to give you that, that support. But as you begin, please take a moment just to notice the contact that you make into the floor. So think about how you've chosen to place the two legs. Today, where are your toes pointing? Uh, are they pointing up to the ceiling or out to the side? Is there maybe a difference between where the right toes are pointing to compare to the left? And then think about the overall contact that your right leg makes into the floor from the buttock to the heel. And then compare that to the contact that your left leg makes from the buttock to the heel. For some people, it will be very little of the leg that's actually in contact. It might just be the heels effectively. For other people, it will be more of the calf and the backs of the thighs, but by no means everybody. And then think about how the pelvis is making contact into the floor, whether you sense maybe you are slightly rotated to one side more than the other. And then think about the, how the back is resting into the floor. Which ribs do you sense in contact with the, with the floor? So quite often you'll see uh, or, and it may be true of yourself that the middle to lower ribs are actually pushed up towards the ceiling, means that, meaning there's quite a big gap underneath the spine. So you see if that's true of yourself as we start the lesson. And notice whether maybe the right side of the chest is resting into the floor differently to the left side. Think about your two shoulders how you've chosen to place the two arms. And then roll the head a little bit from one side to the other, just giving yourself, as ever, permission to do a very easy range of motion. Just noticing as you're rolling the head, is it easier to roll to the one side compared to the other? How do you use the eyes when you're rolling the head? And what do you do with the jaw? So quite often you'll see um, a tendency to grip the jaw constantly to one side. So see if that might be true of yourself and whether that's something you need to do as you roll the head. And then come to centre and please bring your two legs to standing. I've included this lesson as part of the breathing series, partly because it's such a fantastic lesson for the movement of the ribs and the, and the spine. So just begin by focusing, bringing your attention to your breath. Just observing your normal inhalations and exhalations. And as we did in the previous week's lessons, Allow your each inhalation to create this sense of length down towards the pelvis and then length all the way up to the corners of the shoulders, the armpit areas. You can even think of the breath also lengthening all the way up towards the ears. So just by bringing your attention to the breath and, and giving this sense of permission you really allow the breath to create this idea of length and width and depth. So width to the sides of the body with each breath in, but then also depth in the sense that the breath is moving towards the ceiling, but then also down to the floor. 
And once you've just spent a few moments focusing on the inhalations in, the, in, in this way, then the next time you take a breath in, really think of filling or expanding your chest. So you have to make an effort or a deliberately deci decision to draw the breath up into the chest so it expands to its comfortable maximum. And as you do that, pull in the tummy. And then once you've done that, then think of collapsing the chest and pushing out the abdominal air, pushing it out to the front, to the sides and the back. So you bring the breath up into the chest, so you really expand the chest, and then you collapse or shrink the chest and push the breath down into the tummy. Feldenkrais called this technique, which he used quite a lot in his classes, seesaw breathing. And you can see why he called it that. It's as though the seesaw is coming into the chest, and then it's going down into the tummy. Another way I like to ask my students to visualise this is to think they've got a, a ball inside them and it's as if they're drawing or rolling the ball into the chest and then collapsing the chest and pushing the ball down towards their tummy below the pant line. So see if you can just practice this movement this seesaw breath of expanding the chest and then collapsing the chest and pushing down into the tummy. And as you get used to it, you'll be able actually to do this movement independently of how you're breathing in and out. And you can feel how the movement of the diaphragm, how it pushes down and comes up. The diaphragm is that major respiratory muscle that separates the abdominal cavity from the chest cavity. So it's a, it's a funny looking movement, but see if you can bear with it. And you'll also notice that what it also does is, as the breath, the ball, the imaginary ball is brought up into the chest, certain ribs change their contact into the floor and when you push the breath or the, the imaginary ball into the tummy, other ribs press more clearly into the floor. I can feel my lower ribs pressing more clearly into the floor. But, but Feldenkrais, you, one of the reasons he used this seesaw breath pattern a lot was to really kind of free up, free up, differentiate many of the muscles, the intercostal muscles, the abdominal muscles, the diaphragm, so that they are working to their full, full potential. Now pause, leave that alone and we'll be coming back to it during the course of the lesson but please now cross your right leg over the left leg. So you cross the thighs, right leg over the left leg. Have the arms just comfortably by your side and begin to tilt your knees to the right and then bring them back to centre. Now, I always encourage my students to begin with a small movement as they get used to the movement. And you'll, you'll notice as you begin to explore this movement of tilting the knees to the right and back to centre, that because the legs are crossed as you're, and you're tilting the knees, it means that the pelvis is brought into the movement immediately. So as the knees tilt to the right and back to centre, you can feel how the pelvis is rolling to the right. The left side of the pelvis becomes light. And then as you get more used to the movement and perhaps a little bit braver with it, you'll begin to discover that it's not just the pelvis that's changing its position, but that some of the ribs on the left-hand side are beginning to come away from the mat. And therefore, some of the ribs on the right-hand side are pressing more firmly into the mat. So again, just keep with the movement if you can, just exploring it. And then 
try to just ask yourself, are you only allowing parts of yourself to, to leave that are necessary? You see, sometimes in class, as the knees tilt to the side, people, everything goes as a piece, the shoulder and the left side of the chest. In other words, people begin to roll onto the right hand side. But this isn't rolling. We're not trying to roll to the right hand side. What we're really exploring is how the tilting of the knees and the movement of the pelvis can begin to lengthen the spine as it twists. So if you can, try and keep the left shoulder heavy, heavy, so that this twist begin, you can begin to feel this twist create a pull through the spine and you can begin to kind of follow this t the pull as it comes through the spine towards the neck and the head. So just nice easy breathing, checking the jaw is nice and relaxed and beginning to follow this pull that's created through the spine and you'll begin to notice if you're keeping the head just resting and free how this pull begins to just move the chin a little bit towards the breastbone but but don't try and make that happen see if you can just get a sense of it happening allowing it to happen as you tilt the knees to the right and back to centre. And, and now the next time you tilt the knees to the right, just somewhere where you can keep them comfortably, pause there and begin to practice this seesaw breathing. So you pull as if you're pulling the breath up into the chest to expand it in the area of the collarbones and the armpit and then you collapse the chest and push out the tummy. So you expand the chest pulling in the tummy, collapse the chest to push out the tummy and as you get used to this you'll be able to do it slightly more quickly but without any hurry and, and as you're doing it see if you can just explore how it changes the contact of the ribs on the right hand side into the floor. Some ribs will press into the floor more clearly, others not. Good. And once you've done that a few times, leave it alone, come back to centre and then just try tilting the knees a few times to the right again and see if the, the knees maybe tilt a little bit further but without rolling, see if that pull, you can feel it even more strong, or clearly I should say, through the spine. Now pause, leave it alone, uncross the legs and take a rest. And, and when you do come to rest, just notice whether there are any changes that you sense in terms of the contact. Now, for me, I feel as though my right leg, interestingly, has turned out a little bit more compared to my left. I also feel the right side of the pelvis resting more clearly into the, into the floor. It's very interesting. Please just roll the head a little bit from right to left, see if those changes are reflected in your ability to roll the head with ease. And then come back to centre, bend the knees, and this time cross the left leg over the right. So you cross the thighs, have the arms just comfortably by your side, and begin of course to tilt the knees now to the left, and then come back to centre. So again, I'm starting with a smallish movement to begin with, because I want to be open to the, to the fact that it may be a different movement on this side. And checking that my jaw is nice and relaxed, the breath is nice and easy. And I can feel now how as the pelvis rolls to the left, the right side comes away from the floor. And then I can feel a little sequence of 
some of the ribs peeling away from the floor on the right hand side but, but then also how the left ribs some of the left ribs press more clearly into the floor so just exploring this ability to tilt the knees but trying to keep the right shoulder heavy towards the floor see you may discover everything wanting to go together one of the reasons this is such a great lesson is it's exploring this possibility of the pelvis doing something different from the chest think of how many elderly people you know who it's as if the trunk is just one piece so this can be a great way just to play with this possibility of the pelvis doing something different from the shoulders and the chest. I can feel that pull happening now and my chin just moving a little bit closer to my breastbone, not because I'm making that happen but because I'm allowing it to happen. Now, the next time you find the knees tilted to your comfortable left, pause there and begin to explore this seesaw breath pattern. So again, just to remind you, you as if you're drawing an imaginary ball up into the chest, you collapse the chest and push out the tummy. So pull in the tummy, expand the chest, collapse the chest and push out the tummy. So again, it will feel a very strange movement if you're not used to doing it, but bear with it. You might find it's much more difficult to expand the chest than it is to pull out the tummy. So you just do what you comfortably can. And then once you've done that a few times, leave it alone, bring the legs back to centre, and then just try a few times, think, oh, how easy do the legs tilt to the left now? Good. Now come to centre and then take a rest. Oh. And, and then bring your right leg to standing. Bring your right leg to standing and begin to do a movement we often do in class of pressing down into the right foot so as to roll the pelvis to the left. And, and not just to the left, I'm trying to roll it in the direction of my left shoulder and my left ribs. So you push down into the foot to try and roll the pelvis to the left and try to keep the knee, the right knee, looking towards the ceiling. So it'll be very easy to let it drop to the inside as you press into the foot, but see if you can keep it looking towards the ceiling. And then also have the idea that the thigh, the right thigh, is lengthening away from you towards the knee and the toes and if you can manage to do all that you get this lovely lovely opening in the groin in the right hip joint you find that that possibility of a separation in the hip joint and once you've done a few movements maybe just check that you've got the best place for the right foot I can tell you if it's too close to the left leg it won't nearly be as effective. What will tend to happen is your inner thigh muscles will kick in. So maybe have it a bit further out to the right. So you're just exploring pressing into the foot to roll the pelvis to the left. Now, pause and then bring your arms in front of you above the chest. So not above the head, above the chest and have your palms and fingers touching and your arms long so you form effectively an isosceles triangle with your arms the arms are the two long sides of the isosceles triangle and begin to take your triangle to the left and then back to centre so you're exploring taking your triangle of arms to the left and back to centre and 
the rule, the constraint to observe here is to keep the arms long. So it's not one hand sliding relative to the other, you keep the palms together and you think, can you take your triangle to the left and back to centre? So you, you turn the head and eyes as well, you keep the nose and eyes in line with the hands to take your triangle to the left and back to centre. And usually what begins to happen is the left arm will begin to bend. So don't let that happen if you can. Slow it down if necessary. And you're thinking of taking the arms to the left. And if necessary, press into the foot to help you take the arms further. So you can use that right leg to help you direct the arms to the left and back to centre. And you'll discover, if you are able to keep this idea of your triangle, that, that to take the arms to the left is, of course, your right shoulder is coming away from the floor, your left shoulder is digging into the floor. In other words, your chest is turning. So the, if you think of a light on your breastbone pointing towards the, the ceiling, it's now that light is shining off to the left hand side and then you come back to centre. So just explore. If you can, you can press into the foot. You take the arms to the left. And some of you now will be able to easily get your hands down to the floor on the left, but you don't have to get them there. Wherever you get them is good. And then stay there and see, could you lengthen your right leg away from you on the floor? So not on one leg on top of the other, that right leg just lengthens away. And then see if in this strange position you can practice your seesaw breath. So you pull the breath up into the chest, pulling in the tummy, and then you collapse the chest and pull the tummy out. So you try and expand the chest, pulling the tummy in, pushing out the tummy as you collapse the chest. And just see what can you feel as you're practicing this seesaw breath, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed, is which ribs press into the floor as you go from one from the chest to the tummy, that's it. What can you feel differently? Good. And once you've done that a few times, leave it alone, bring the arms back to centre, keeping the legs long, and then try, keeping the legs long, to take your triangle to the left again, turning the head and eyes. Can you, can you get to the floor? Can you get near to the floor? As you do this, still keeping the arms long but soft. In other words, can you twist, can you turn the chest, turn the spine, spine as you take the arms to the left. Now just pause, bring the right leg back to standing and, and then use the leg again to help you take the arms to the side and back to centre side and back to centre. Is that a bit easier? And then leave it alone and take a rest. You can see when you explore a movement like that why it's such a great lesson for golfers and racket players, can't you? How to generate movement from your centre rather than from the periphery. So take a moment to rest and roll the head and eyes a little bit from side to side. And then come to centre and we'll explore doing that to the other side. So first of all, just bring your left leg to standing. Think about where you've placed it. Okay, if it's too close to the right leg, it won't be as effective. So you may need to take it a little bit further out to the right. The right place will be dependent on you and your own feeling rather than just trying to copy where I've placed it, but um, play with a few different positions and then begin to explore pressing into the left foot 
to roll the pelvis to the right this time and not just to the right I'm aiming the movement towards my right shoulder trying to keep the knee the left knee looking towards the ceiling and the idea that the thigh is lengthening towards the knees so you get this lovely opening in the groin and if you think about it all this keeping the knee to the ceiling the thigh lengthening away from you you will feel how these outer hip muscles these gluteal this gluteal area here begins to engage this is the beginnings of standing walking standing on one leg jumping on one leg being able to do this movement so don't be afraid to push down into the floor to create the, the movement Good. now pause bring your arms into your isosceles triangle again so the hands are above the breastbone and you're looking at the hands and then explore taking your triangle to the right and then coming back to centre so again start with a small movement to begin with see can you feel to keep the triangle in, intact you have to turn the chest so I think of my right shoulder digging into the floor to help me turn the chest and then come back to centre. Okay, you can press into the foot to help you roll a bit more to the right hand side and then you come back to centre. So what we're also doing here, you can feel is we're rolling into those ribs, along those ribs on the right hand side to help, to help create this movement. Now the next time you have the arms to the right and some of you will be able to take them easily to the floor pause there and then lengthen your left leg down and away from you and see if you can practice this seesaw breathing in this strange position. It may not look very pretty as you're looking at me doing it, but see if you can just practice this, bringing the imaginary ball up into the chest. You expand the chest, pulling in the tummy, push the chest um, down, push the ball down into your tummy. So just this seesaw breath just to change the ribs, change the, the chest. Good. And then once you've done it a few times, leave it alone. Come back to centre with the head and uh, the, the arms. And then just try with the art, legs long. Can you take your triangle to the right and come back? Triangle to the right that's it, and come back. And then bring your left leg back to standing and try it a few times once more with the legs standing and see how that goes. And then come back to centre, let the legs go long and take a rest. So very interesting. I hope you have been enjoying all these breathing lessons and the the, the rib lessons that we've been doing uh, I hope you'll have got various things out of them one of the things I have been discovering a lot about my organisation is when I first come down to lie down on the mat what it tends to happen is my ribs tend to be a little bit pushed up towards the ceiling and, it, and it's just been marvellous to as I explore these lessons to discover how these same ribs actually are finding a new way of resting down towards the floor which means I've been getting some length through the, the spine it's very interesting now please just roll the head a little bit right to left and you'll not maybe you'll notice as you're rolling the head to the right and the left how the the nose can trace a little arc towards one shoulder 
and then towards the other shoulder. It goes in a little semi-circle towards one shoulder and then the other. But then pause in the middle and then instead of the nose tracing an arc, think of turning the head in a different way. So I think of as the face turns to the left, the back of the head turns to the right, come back to centre and then think of the face turning to the right as the back of the head turns to the left, come back to centre. So face to the right, back of the head to the left, come back to centre, face to the right, back of the head to the left. So in other words, my nose isn't making an arc, my, the tip of my nose is going straight to the left, come back and then straight to the right, which is more the kind of turning of the head that you would use in standing, isn't it? You can feel a different organisation of the neck to do that. Come back to centre and then please bring your legs back to standing and cross your right leg over the left again and then turn the face to the left and the back of the head to the right and see if you can stay there. So looking as far as you comfortably can to the left with the face, the nose, the eyes and then bring your right hand behind the back of the head. So it comes behind the back of the head and my fingertips are just wrapped around the left side of the head, sort of overlapping my ears. And then begin to explore, tilting your knees to the right and back to centre. So just tilting the knees to the right and back to centre. A few times, tilting the knees to the right. I can feel again a pull going through my spine towards my neck and my head. And then the next time your legs are tilted to the right, somewhere comfortable, so I'm not dropping the knees, I'm, at any stage I could bring them back to the centre, but stay with the knees tilted to your comfortable right. And then point the right elbow towards the ceiling and see if you can begin to lift the head and lower it a few times. So it's as if the right elbow is aiming in an arc towards the floor by my left heel. I'm thinking of it going up and over in an arc. And see if you can do this on an out breath so that it gives the ribs a chance to soften. And it's almost as if I'm using the arm, the hand, the right hand, to help my turn my head and eyes even more to look to the left, but try not to strain, try not to hold the breath. So just to explore, can you feel the ribs pressing down into the mat to help you lift the head? So it's not straining in the neck, it's actually feeling how it's your chest is doing this work. And if you get it, You'll quickly feel the work in some of your abdominal muscles. You feel how, feel how the knees come up a little bit if the centre is working for you. Good. Now pause, carefully bring the head back to centre. Undo the arms, bring the legs back to centre. And then uncross the legs and take a rest. And then just roll the head a little bit right and left. So going back to the arc way of rolling the head and eyes. And then come to centre. Bring both legs back to standing. Cross your left leg over the right. Turn your face, in. so you turn the face to the right, the back of the head to the left. And then bring your left hand behind the back of the head to begin with. And then first of all, just practice, explore, 
tilting the knees to the left and back to centre. So just allowing the knees with control to go to the left and back to centre. Again, just exploring this pull going through the spine. And then stay with the knees to your comfortable left. Point the left elbow up and begin to lift the head. But stay looking to the right with the head and eyes as much as possible. And see if you can aim the elbow in the direction of the of your right heel. So I think of it going in an up and arc over to the right heel. And I'm trying to make sure I'm not gripping my head with the hand. So effectively, each time it's as though the, the, the hand is just helping to turn the head a little bit more to the right as the chest folds in this very unique way can feel how certain ribs are being brought down into the floor to help with the lifting of the head. And then leave it alone, bring the legs back to centre, undo the legs and the arms. And then please bring your right palm onto the forehead, so fingers are facing to the left. And just use the weight of the arm to roll the head a little bit from one side to the other. And then change hands so it's the left hand on the forehead. And again, just use the weight of the arm to roll the head from side to side, letting the eyes be part of that rolling. And then rest. You just feel any changes you may feel it may sense in terms of the contact into the floor. And then bring both legs to standing and once more cross your right leg over the left. And then turn your face to the left once more, back of the head to the right. Now I'm going to take my glasses off for this next movement, Just you'll see why. And stay with the face tilted to the left, turn to the left. And then interlace your hands, so you interlace the hands, and then turn them so the palm is facing towards the ceiling. And see, can you rest the backs of the hands on the left cheekbone or the left temple? The idea here is that the weight of the arms just helps to fix the head in this position, turn to the left. And as much as possible, you want to let the elbows just rest out to the side so you're not lifting them up to the ceiling. So the arms just help to keep the head in this position. Stay looking to the left, draw nice and relaxed and begin to carefully explore, tilting the knees to the right and back to centre. So be careful because you've obviously fixed the head in one position, so you don't want there to be any jerky or sudden movements with the legs. You're just exploring how far can you comfortably tilt the knees and be able to reverse the movement to any any stage, just feeling, exploring this pull that the legs create through the spine. But you keep the weight of the hands on the head and each time you come back to centre. And then the next time you find the legs tilted to your comfortable right, pause there. And see, can you practice this seesaw breath again? So I think of pulling my tummy in, pulling the breath up into the chest, collapsing the chest and pushing down into the belly. So again, as if I had a ball inside me and I'm trying to roll that ball up into my chest and then pushing it down into the tummy. Just a few 
of these funny movements, this seesaw breath pattern. And then leave it alone, bring the legs back to centre, and then just a couple of times try tilting the knees to the right and back to centre a few times. So the knees maybe go a little bit further. Now carefully undo, release the arms, bring the head back to centre, so strong movement for the head and neck. Just bring the both palms onto the forehead, let the legs go long, and just roll the head a little bit from side to side. Come back to centre. One of the features of Feldenkrais's lessons that, and a strategy he often employed is, you see, in day-to-day -day life, what happens in walking, sitting, is we tend to keep our middle, the body, fixed, and we're just moving the head on the end of the spine. Whereas he would often reverse those relationships. So, for example, in the variation we've just done, this time we've fixed the head, but we've been moving the spine and the body around that fixed position. Now, bring the legs back to standing. Cross your left leg over the right. Turn the face to the right, the back of the head to the left interlace the fingers, the hands, and maybe change that to your less familiar interlace. And then bring the backs of the hands to rest on the left hand side of the face, elbows flopped out to the side, and begin to explore tilting your knees to the left and back to centre. Don't drop the knees, so you always want to control the position of the knees and then you bring them back. Okay, nice easy breathing, nice easy rhythm of the movement. And then stay with the legs tilted to your comfortable left and begin to practice this seesaw breath in this position. So you pull the breath up into the tummy, expanding, sorry, into the chest, expanding the chest, and then you collapse the chest and push your imaginary ball down into the tummy. Then, okay, just feel the diaphragm put, coming up and pushing down. Feel how the ribs change, have to adapt to the movement. Once you've done it a few times, leave it alone, bring the legs back to center, and then just try tilting the knees a few times to the left and back to center and see how that goes. And then come back to centre, bring your head back to the middle, undo the legs, and take a rest. And when you rest, just roll the head a little bit from right to left. Good. Now, certainly that feels a bit easy, rolling of the, of the head. Now, bring the legs back to standing and cross your right leg over the left and form a triangle with your arms. Your isosceles triangle, once more the hands are above the chest, your right leg is crossed over the legs and begin to do a small, small movement to begin with of tilting your triangle to the left as you tilt the knees to the right and then you come back to centre. So you take the arms to the left but knees to the right and then you come back to centre. See if you can think of this as a single movement, so not moving the arms and then the knees that both the arms and the knees leave your midline together and come back together so that you are creating a twist through your middle 
breastbone is going turning one way, navel is turning the other way, and you're coming back to centre. So again, just see, can you begin to think of creating this twist, not by moving the knees and the arms, although they move, it's because you're generating this twist through your core or through your centre. So you're having to counterbalance the knees with the arms and the chest. So it's okay, but see how my ribs on the left hand side are pressing more clearly into the mat as my right side of my pelvis presses into the mat. Okay. Now pause and change to the other side. So you have the left leg crossed over the right. Form your triangle, your isosceles, a triangle again with your arms. And begin, begin to explore. Can you take your triangle to the right, but the knees to the left, and bring them back together? So again, it's very tempting to try and move the arms first, and the knees. But that would be two movements. You're trying to have this as a single movement you're creating in your centre. Think of all the, the golfers, tennis players, again, can you create power and movement and strength from your centre? Is your jaw relaxed as you're practicing this? Is the breath nice and easy? Come to centre, please just let the arms go down, undo the legs and take a rest. Nice to feel that rotation in the upper part of the spine between the shoulder blades. Now, uh, Please bring both legs to standing. Once more, cross your right leg over the left and tilt your knees a few times to the right and back to centre. Are you finding it easier to be able to keep the left shoulder down? Do you feel that pull going more clearly through the spine? And then stay with your knees tilted to the right, just some way you can comfortably maintain them. Interlace both hands behind the back of the skull this time, behind the head. And then lift the elbows towards the ceiling. And a few times just try to lift the head with the assistance of the hands. So assistance in the sense that they're just cradling the head. And to lift the head again, you can perhaps see, feel, if you allow the ribs to move, that's it, that it's, it will be the chest that's lifting the head. You don't need to do too many, I can tell you, to feel the work. You feel, oh, this, this area working like crazy. In a very, very satisfactory way, it has to be said. And then, and then pause. Now, bring the legs to centre change the cross of the legs, tilt the knees a few times to the left and back to centre, and then stay with the legs tilted to your comfortable left, change the interlace but bring the hands behind the back of the head again, point the elbows to the ceiling, take a breath in, and then as you breathe out just try a few times to lift and lower the head. And you'll, you'll perhaps feel of course, if you're letting the chest and the tummy do the work, how the knees just come in a little bit because of the movement in your centre. Good. Just do a few, leave it alone, undo the legs and take a rest. And then bring both legs back to standing and keep them about hip distance or shoulder width apart and see can you form your triangle again with your arms 
and begin to explore taking your triangle first to the left, come back and then to the right and come back. Now you can press into the feet to help you, so I press into the right foot to help me take the triangle to the left, press into the left foot to help me take the triangle to the right. Try to keep the knees looking towards the ceiling as you're doing this, so not so much tilting the knees from side to side, but see if you're pressing into the foot, it's as though that I press the left foot as though that left thigh is lengthening away from me, and then into the right thigh to take the arms to the left. You see, as you doing this from side to side, and then pause, let both legs go long, and now see if you can take your triangle once to the left, turning the head and eyes come back, and once to the once to the right. But if you'll notice I'm not dropping the arms, the arms are turning because I'm turning my chest and spine and hopefully you're feeling that ability too. Good. Leave it alone and take a rest. Notice how that all feels, how your contact is, is into the floor. Do you feel a little bit longer? Maybe you feel a little bit broader, spread into the floor, it more, taking more support from the floor. And then please just roll the head a little bit from one side to the other. Just nice and slowly to see how far into your system can you feel the rolling of the head. I can feel the little shift of weight through my ribs. I can feel how the contact underneath my fingertips just changes slightly as my head rolls from side to side. You may even feel actually how the pressure underneath your heels shifts or changes as the head rolls from side to side. Good. Please leave it alone. Carefully bring your legs to standing and then roll to the side and come up. So when you do come to transition to stand, take a moment just to notice how that all feels whether the chest feels a little bit more independent from the pelvis, your ability to turn. And it also perhaps just notice that any difference you may feel in walking. Very much hope you enjoyed the lesson. I absolutely love teaching it this week and I know lots of my students here in Rutland loved it as well. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, then please hit the subscribe button.